on the spot. Our last tape, Tots, brings double demos for the new stacking DLC, The Last Hobo King, and Operation Flashpoint Red River. The Start Select crew help you decide which 3DS games will bring you more bang for your buck. We get the latest coming to Wii Shop channel and new releases, and go on location for WonderCon. Today on the spot. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Today on the Spot here in the GameSpot studios. I'm Chris Waters, joined by Carolyn Pettit, hey. and we are decidedly not live today. Indeed, yeah, but I, but I feel like, nonetheless, we are a part of GameSpot history because this is the the last of the pre-taped shows that, uh, you know, that we've been doing for, for so that long. That is true, folks. Yeah. Today on the Spot, as you know it, is going to go away and be replaced by On The Spot, yes. which will be this Thursday, debuting Thursday, April 7th, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Same time as you're used to seeing Tots, but it's gonna be an hour and it will be live. Yes. For, for real this time. Not, and it, not, I'll be wearing the same shirt the whole show. And it'll, and it'll be hosted by the one and only Chris Waters. Yes. Your, your campaign was a success. My campaign was successful. Yes. Uh, investigations into campaign uh, contribution mm. fraud are just totally unfounded and ongoing. They're merely allegations at this point. Um, but yeah, that's the format change, folks. Tots is changing. We'll be here live on Thursday. But our last show, it's a doozy. We got a lot. We do. We have a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a box of live ammunition, 45 millimeter, you know, right there on the on the desk. It so says that's, it on the box. It must be true. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's pretty, we're kind of move. That's not a gift uh, trivia prize we've ever given away before. <laughs> no, we are braving new trivia ground. We got plenty of giveaways later on. We got demos. We got international flavor. We are on location. The whole gamut. And of course, that starts off with the news and the GameSpot news team. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, April 5th. I'm Tor Thorson. By any reckoning, the recent earthquake and tsunami in Japan were humanitarian tragedies on a massive scale. However, the twin disasters and subsequent nuclear crisis have also created a massive logistical nightmare for Japanese industry, causing many companies such as Toyota and Honda to shutter factories. Unfortunately for gamers, another one of the companies affected is Sony. The electronics giant has also temporarily shut down several plants in northern Japan for repairs, as well as others in other regions because of parts shortages. As a result, Sony's forthcoming portable, the NGP, could be delayed, according to Sony Computer Entertainment America President Jack Trenton. Speaking with Bloomberg, the executive said the industrial disruption might lead to a postponement of the handheld's launch in some territories. It may be the straw that says, maybe we just get to one market by the end of the year, he told a financial news service. He added that a later launch could have the benefit of allowing publishers an extended development period for their NGP launch titles. In other news, a new Burnout game appears to be in the works, since the Australian Classification Board has rated a title called Burnout Crash. The game will be multi-platform according to the April 1st filing by publisher Electronic Arts. Unfortunately, the filing offers little other detail of the project. If Criterion returns to development duties on Crash, it, was com it would come as little surprise. In November, EA Senior VP of First Person Shooter and Racing Games Patrick Soderlund said, Obviously Criterion is a brilliant studio. We're going to put against something that makes sense for EA and them. I hope to see more Burnout games in the future, but it's about prioritizing what we want to do. At this point we haven't made a decision on whether Burnout does this or that, but it's not dead for sure, no. Well that's it, your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, April 5th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. You got all that crazy April Fool's money kicking around you and you don't know where to spend it? Check out this week on new releases. This week in new releases, last week Nintendo's 3DS, a Sans Glasses 3D portable device caught our attention. This week is decidedly less busy sporting a small handful of titles. Kicking off the week is the dishwasher Vampire Smile from Microsoft Game Studios. Reprise your role as a disgruntled pan scrubber who works in the service industry by day and meat cleaves a path of justice across the city by night. Also out this week is Karaoke Revolution Glee Volume 2 for the Wii. The second game in the Glee series adds more than 20 new songs, including Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, Aerosmith's Dream On, Madonna's Like a Virgin, and The All-American Rejects Gives You Hell. Gamers looking for a new Kinect party game can grab Take-Two's Carnival Games Monkey See Monkey Do this Tuesday for the Xbox 360. 
The latest Carnival Games entry has players participating in a range of games like Ring Flip, Pop Darts, Granny Shot, and several others. Additionally, gamers will be able to unlock over 40 pets and costumes for their Xbox Live avatars. Shooter fans this week aren't without an option. Viva Media's Shadow Harvest Phantom Ops arrives exclusively for PC on Tuesday. The tactical shooter thrusts players into the boots of a soldier fighting in combat areas around the globe. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. So obviously one of the biggest new releases lately was the Nintendo 3DS, yeah. Caro, and you yourself launch I, system, pounced on it. I acquired it, uh, I you know, went out immediately, grabbed one. Uh, a couple of things I'm really enjoying about it. Yeah. One, uh, uh, Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, a game that you reviewed oh, and yeah. that I, I think is is really cool. That one is really fun, I'm glad you're liking it. Yeah, and um, you know, here in the office, you've probably seen me and Justin and a bunch of us like doing all this crazy street pass stuff where we're like making sure that we get each other's me's and you know, the, you take them into like a dungeon in this built-in game and and exchange puzzle pieces, and it's it's really it's a morning ritual now. Yes, to see you guys are sort of all <laughs> walking around holding your DSs yeah, aloft. They're it, like, it's, a, it's in my pocket. Yeah. Are you street, did, you, did you street pass me? It's, street passing is becoming a verb. It, yes, it is. It yeah. is. It's very simple, but there's something weirdly addicting about it. Um, and we've got more 3DS coverage a little bit later in the show. Yes. We're going to do a little roundup. Uh, we're not going to do it. The UK totally did it. They have got uh, the coverage there. Give you a taste of the 3DS launch lineup and what that's all about. But that's not the only Nintendo thing we've got going, is it, Carol? Yeah, Nintendo's, of course, still supporting their, their full range of uh, downloadable channels. So let's find out what's new this week on the Wii Shop channel. This week on Wii Shop channel, in WiiWare, admire aquatic life in Planet Fish. Catch and collect exotic fish from around the globe while avoiding obstacles and dangerous species lurking in the depths. Then your two favorite sci-fi creatures are still at war. It's a Monstika Corral Monsters vs. Robots demo. Robots have overrun the stompy lands, and you must stampede them through 20 levels of circuit-crushing mayhem in order to win their freedom. In Virtual Console, he's got a big noggin and knows how to use it. It's Super Bonk. Enjoy the first installment of the Bonk series on Super NES, in which Bonk must bash his way back to prehistoric times in order to confront his nemesis, King Drool. In DSiWare, Check out Anonymous Notes Chapter 1 from the Abyss. Take on this RPG set inside a dungeon that extends ad infinitum. Afterwards, a fairy tale awaits you. When a giant menace threatens your village, you and a group of young fairies set out on a quest to save your species through puzzle solving. Finally this week, it's Absolute Baseball. Become the manager of a baseball team and lead it to the championships. Make all the decisions for your team from selecting the starting lineup to switching pitchers and giving batting orders. That's all the time we have, folks. Join us next week for more This Week on We Shop Channel. Game Demo! Hey everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. We have two special guests with us today, Tim Schaefer, Lee Petty, here to show us stacking in the new DLC. Yes, called the Lost Hobo King. The Lost Hobo King. So tell us about the DLC. Uh, it's, it is uh, a DLC that involves a story involving Charlie and his friend Levi, the mm -hmm. hobo, uh, who further was the know. further adventures of Levi, the <laughs> hobo, and Charlie. And uh, Levi was a character in the, in the main game mm -hmm. uh, who sort of uh, maintained the secret hideout and helped Charlie at the end of the game in a very pivotal way. And in this DLC, uh, he's asked for Charlie's help um, because the, his uncle, who is uh, named Rufus, Rufus Riken, is an heir to the hobo throne. Um, oh. They believe they've discovered the lost kingdom of Camelfoot, which is where the uh, last uh, hobo king was rumored to have, have left his crown. So we've arrived <laughs> and we'll see this sort of flyby here of, uh, of the town. Uh, and one of the things we wanted to do with this expansion is show kind of a part of the world that people didn't get to see in the main game of stacking. So we really wanted to, to go and, and flesh out this whole world of hobo that was sort of <laughs> talked about on the periphery of stacking. But, uh, and also we're doing these sort of outdoor town environments, whereas uh, stacking, the majority of stacking is kind of based in vehicles. So we're trying to, trying to give the players a little something different here. Um, we see Charlie again is the smallest, Aww, still the smallest Charlie. doll in the world. He's back. There he is. And so what, what you actually have to do is you have to pass these three tests of valor that the ancient hobo blacksmiths have left, or hobo mystics have left, mm -hmm. to, to awaken the hobo blacksmiths who are going to reforge the crown. And uh, we should show them a, a mystic. We have this, uh, these old guys walking around with these little, um, uh, you'll see there's one over there. I love you just jump at this somebody. Yeah, I can listen there. Oh. 
so she looks around. So we've got these guys here, these are the Hobo Mystics. And one of the things that we wanted to do to give the player is um, a new way to kind of learn about the world from the backstory. So there's a lot of these little hobo markings that are all around the world. Um, oh, but if you go up to kind of uh, some of the bigger ones on scrolls and, uh, and you do your power, it'll actually reveal a hint about the game for you. So these guys, uh, the idea is that these are the ancient guys, you know, versed in the ways, the true believers of the king, and they can read these runes and, and, uh, and uh, give the player hints of where to find certain things. So Tim's kind of wandered into one of the um, challenge areas here. And unplanned. Unplanned. Yeah. <laughs> unplanned. And this is one of the tests of valor that you have to pass. Um, and it's uh, see a little bird walking across there, and this sort of boxcar house stands up. And this is a, a ancient test left that you have to get in that house. But mm -hmm. what happens is whenever uh, anyone crosses this sort of room rug here, the house stands up and you can't get inside of it. Which is fun uh, throwback to Russian folklore, I think. Yeah. Well. Yeah, the inspiration for the house is, you know, since these are Russian dolls, we look back to some of the Russian fairy tales for inspiration. Mm -hmm. And there is this story of this witch called the Baba Yaga. And she has this chicken-footed house that when you get near it, if you approach it from a certain side of the forest, will stand up and you oh. can't get in it. So we sort of adapted that into this sort of boxcar hobo <laughs> crone house. Never read that one. I'm not going to talk yeah. about this guy. Yeah, that I guy is the uh, surprise. Everyone noticed the panda. Show him and not <laughs> talk about him. So we're walking down this sort of tunnel, which is con constructed like inside of a tin can. Mm -hmm. and you can sort of look at that and see what that reveals to us. Marking. So it's still oh, there's stinky there's people down this way. Stinky people this way. I like the uh, lighting down here. Yeah, so this is our, uh, our homage to German expressionist film in here. So you kind of come into this area and uh, you get a little fly through. And uh, one ghouls. of the ghouls, ghouls, we have ghouls, that's right. Since everyone ghouls. else did zombie packs, we are like, we can one up that totally. We yeah. can do, do ghoul ghouls. packs. So ghoul ghouls, not dolls. zombies. Yeah, because no. zombies eat the living, ghouls eat the dead. So it's kind of like zombies yeah. extreme. We switched it up on everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you have your zombies. These guys are going to eat wooden dolls, so they have to be ghoul. That's not alive. So you have to get through all these ghouls. So this is one of our uh, challenges. Sure I can just walk through Six it. different solutions. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, there's six ways to Why don't you go out and get the cheese guy? So if you, if you uh, go in there with some random person, they'll, uh, they'll go after you. So what we wanted to do is introduce a little bit. Uh, some of our challenges have a little more. Ah. They'll ah. bite you. Oh. And this guy drags you out. He's a big, big mystic. Saved. But what you can do in, in uh, what we wanted to do with this particular challenge was introduce a little more skill-based gameplay in, mm -hmm. in stacking. So it's not all just puzzle solving. That this one requires some faster reflexes and some timing to get through this particular challenge. Oh, okay, I see. Um, and uh, one of one of the uh, guys that Tim found here is this cheese vendor. This particularly <laughs> pungent cheese vendor. Well, and that is stinky uh, cheese. He does have stinky cheese. Like it's got like the stink of death. Although, okay. It does. Yeah. So these ghouls will kind of come after you, but if you throw cheese, it'll kind of keep them at bay. So you can kind of like, uh, if you time it right, you can kind of <laughs> make your way through here by deterring them with your stinky cheese. That's so funny. <laughs> it's a good practical tip too for if this situation ever comes up in your life. Yeah, so if you ever come across any ghouls, uh, just yeah. come armed with lots of stinky cheese. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, I, if there's a, anything that smells worse than death, it's still uh, any of the blue cheese family really, but. Although I heard you eat blue cheese with butter, and it doesn't really taste good. Like really? Yeah. Well, I guess I guess my thought on that is you could eat just about anything with butter, and it would improve. <laughs> and it improve anything. So Tim's kind of gotten past the ghouls, and he's gonna uh, jumps into this thing and pumps open the gate, so he can continue on his way. All right. So roughly, how long is the game? Um, the add-on. Well, it's it's uh you know it's one sort of fleshed oh, out town my cheese. with uh, we have three challenges in that. Each mm -hmm. of those challenges has uh, multiple solutions. When we're looking here, six different solutions. Okay. Um, we have uh, I think it's fifteen or more unique dolls to find, uh, and uh, a full ten hijinks. So it's about uh, I don't know maybe about a third of what the main game was. You know, it's it's a pretty mm -hmm. complete level, um, and it's all one hundred percent new assets and everything. So all the dolls are are made from scratch with all new abilities and everything like that. Awesome. So, when's the game coming out and what platform? The game is out today on PSN and it comes out tomorrow, Wednesday on XBLA. All right, great. Well, thank you guys both for coming by and showing it up to us. Yeah. Thanks for having us. I'm really focused on cheese. Really right focused now. He's really focused. Yeah, once you get started on cheese, there's no coming back. <laughs> All right, that was our look at the Lost Hobo King. Now, all the rest of the show. Now that was just the first of our two daily demos, but before we get to the next one, we're going on location to WonderCon. This was a convention that happened in San Francisco this past weekend that brought fans of comics, games, manga, anime, 
sci-fi sort of all together under one roof and we headed over there to check it out and bring you guys this little video feature. Hey everybody, it's Ricardo and I am standing here in front of the DC Comics booth at WonderCon, which is the Bay Area comic book convention that's celebrating its 25th anniversary. Now we're here in front of DC because Green Lantern was the big news of the show. Uh, they revealed more information on the movie, which everybody's really anticipating. We've got the game back there. But that's just one of the things that happens here at this convention. And what we've never done for you guys before is taking you around the show and giving you an idea of, of just what happens here. So we're going to do that right now. That is just a sample of what was going on here at WonderCon this weekend. Now we're wrapping up our tour here in front of the Marvel Comics booth. Now Marvel has its own movies as well. They've got Captain America and Thor, and not only do they have some props from the film that people can take pictures with, but they've got the games for both. So we hope you enjoyed this look at WonderCon. We're going to have a lot more comic news for you this July from Comic-Con. But until then, we'll see you. So as we so delicately foreshadowed earlier in the show, we now come to the toss where we're going to throw it to the start select feature on 3DS games. So Kara, we said uh, Shadow Wars yeah. was one of the ones you've been. we have both enjoyed. Yeah. And uh, have you been playing any other ones that we might see on this list? Um, well, no. I, I mean, I played Nintendogs to review, to review that, right, and I yes. really, you know, fe fell in love with the... Adorable. Yeah, they're so cute. They're you know, fell cute. in love with the dogs and cats there. I, I, I soared around in some pilot wings, you know, got into that sort of 3D view of the plane coming out at you. It was kind of very peaceful, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but I think it's I think it's good that, you know, obviously there's a lot of games that came out alongside this this thing. Very and true. 
some of them are more, you know, worth your hard-earned money than others and gonna, gonna give you more out of the system. So our, yes, our friends in the UK uh, brought us this uh, Start Select 3DS Review Roundup. Let's take a look. The has barely been in the shops a week, though it's early days with Nintendo yet to call it on how record-breaking or otherwise the sales figures are in the UK, Nintendo in the US says day one sales beat those of any handheld system in its history. The Glasses Free Portable console arrived with a big batch of launch titles including first-party Nintendo efforts such as Pilot Wings Resort and Nintendo Dogs and Cats and third-party games such as Konami's PES 2011 and Sega Super Monkey Ball 3D. Only three 3DS exclusive games made the UK top 10 though. The highest placing was Super Street Fighter 4 3D at number 4, which chimes with what we heard from the fans queuing at the midnight London launch. This was the game they literally couldn't wait till morning to play. What Street Fighter, same as well. Street Fighter. More than that, they were mostly pumped for the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time remake and the 3D Super Mario game promised as future 3DS releases. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. For reviews of the actual already here 3DS games you can buy right now, GameSpot's got you covered. Here are the five best reviewed 3DS launch games on the site at the moment. Does this place look familiar? Maybe you know it well. It's Woohoo Island of Wii Sports Resort fame. And now it's home to Pilot Wings Resort, a 3D addition to Nintendo's multi-aircraft flight sim. Among the 3DS launch titles, Pilot Wings Resort has the fifth highest scoring 3DS review on the site right now, a respectable 6.5 for its intuitive controls, crisp 3D and nicely judged difficulty curve. It loses marks for too little variety in the vehicles and missions and its, hey, where's the rest of my game, shortness. You could conceivably beat every mission in under two hours if you're handy with a rocket belt. <laughs> At number 4 we have PES 2011 3D, a stereoscopic debut for Konami's football franchise. It scores a 7 for great controls and gameplay, a deep Master League mode and well presented Champions League mode. It misses out on top marks for its lack of online features and variety in single player modes and for some mundane commentary. Still, though there's much that could be improved, fans of the series will get a kick out of this 3DS instalment. Nintendogs and Cats lands in third place among GameSpot's 3DS launch reviews. For its adorable critters, charming training and pet care activities, and good use of the 3DS's street pass functionality and inbuilt pedometer, it bags a 7.5 score. On the other hand, it'll be a while before you've earned the cash to buy a cat, and once you get it, there's not so much to do with it, just like in real life. Anyhow, though it might not quite win the best in show, Nintendogs and Cats might just win your heart. Aww. In at number two is Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, a deep, turn-based tactical RPG with rich environments and diverse abilities. It gets an 8.0 for its strategic challenge, sizable campaign and excellent use of the 3DS's dual screens. It's only slightly let down by a dull story and flat characters. I'm ready for you. Bring it on! Which leaves the 3DS launch queue favourite Super Street Fighter 4 3D edition to take the top spot. It's the highest scoring 3DS title on the site so far, picking up an 8.5. GameSpot reviewer our own Mark Walton lords the accessible touchscreen controls, characteristically fantastic art, rich multiplayer options and neat street pass figurine collecting. The letdowns? The absence of both online leaderboards and tournament mode. So, if it's just the five launch games you're picking up with your brand new 3DS bundle, Pilot Wings Resort, PES 2011 3D, Nintendo Dogs and Cats, Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, and Super Street Fighter 4 3D are your best bet, which should tide you over for a bit, if not until we're queuing up for Super Mario 3D. For more 3DS reviews and all the rest on the Nintendo 3DS, head to gamespot.com 3DS. Demo. All right, folks, it's our second of two daily demos. Joining me on set here is Aaron Sampson. 
GameSpot video editor extraordinaire. Aaron, what have you brought us? I have brought Operation Flashpoint Red River. Up, Red Devils. River, excellent. You, uh, I see you running there. You have a gun in your hands. You must always stay fit in the military. Absolutely. And so you're on some like calisthenics, a little exercise here. I am running towards an insurgent-held village. Uh -huh. These are apparently terrorists who hate everybody in the entire world, including the East and the West. Ooh. And they are equal opportunity terrorists. Indeed, but nice. even though they hate everybody, they actually are very environmentally friendly, as you can see in the background there. They are holding a dam. They picked a beautiful place to live. They like them say. some hydroelectric power. Dam, okay, that's definitely a, a you know, strategic point. So Operation Flashpoint uh, Dragon Rising came out a couple years ago. And In 2009. That, and so this series is like a, it's more of a tactical military shooter. It's not, you're not in a corridor, you're not running, you know, from point A to point B all the time. You, you're here in this open field. You are injured, hold A to treat your wounds. But if you're exposed here, you're going to die pretty quick. Yeah, so basically this game's a tactical military shooter. Um, if you don't use your squad to your advantage, you'll probably get killed very quickly. Okay. Um, unlike uh, Dragon Rising, though, this game does have a much more forgiving checkpoint system. Oh, nice. And also, you have body armor, and the insurgents largely do not. So um, you can take a lot more hits than they can. Okay. And so you just a second ago, you sort of called up a uh, little command wheel, and now you're... You, get, you have your guys suppressing a position, which clears you up to flank a little bit. Is that what we're seeing? Yeah, so there's an RPG team on the roof here. So I'll hold down the right bumper, tell my team to go ahead and suppress them. Or I'll just blow them up with a grenade. Or you can do that. <laughs> also effective. But yeah, you can see they're suppressing fire going in there. And uh, you got your sort of team indicator down there on the bottom left. You got a couple different guys on your team. You have three squad mates. You also have kind of you know, the toughest nail sergeant who likes to swear at you a lot and tell you where to go. He does do a lot of swearing. I was watching you play this earlier. There was like a, a, just a whole litany of vulgarity. He is not very gentlemanly. He definitely lets you know what he wants you to do. Uh-huh. And so, yes, uh, rated M for mature, I think it, it goes without saying. Okay, so I'm going to tell my team to go ahead and secure this building. So they're just going to go ahead, bust up in there, and shoot anyone they see. And that uh, frees me up to run around the side of the building, not have to worry so much are those about the, who's Is inside. that your team over there? Or how many teams are on, are on this mission with you? Uh, is it there just are, your squad, or is there another one? Along? There's uh, up to two other fire teams with you at any given time. Uh huh. Um, and those fire teams are usually holding down the other side of the map. Okay. So you're working in conjunction with those fire teams. But sort of in your little skirmish engagement area, it's all you. Yeah, guys. so you're given an area that you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. There should be some men to shoot around here. Um, you're given an area that you're responsible for. If you don't do your job very well, then the other squads can get shot up. Oh, I saw a bad guy over there. I'm going to go over here and see what happens. Okay, so you're taking okay, the elevator Okay, so position. it looks like that was all secure. Oh, yeah. So we got guys in the distance yeah, yeah. here. This is Alpha Team. Contact. Okay, so this is... Now, this map, you're here in a small village, but, you know, you're engaging at, like, less than 100 meters. You're, this is pretty close quarters combat. Yeah, so in Dragon Rising, um, a lot of your engagements were done out at, you know, 400 yards or beyond, sometimes even 1,000 yards. Yeah. You'd be shooting at very small targets in the distance. Mm -hmm. This one, oop, this oh. one uh, gives you <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> close and personal experience. Uh, so this is like sort of a, these are like container ship? Containers that have been made into houses? Yeah, this is actually, oop, I got some behind me. This is actually a trading outpost here. Uh-huh. I'll cover the, oop, doesn't matter you. This is actually a trading outpost. Um, this is all insurgent held territory. Um, on the way to this dam that you're trying to secure and set up a base. And the, so the general conflict, it's, it's happening in Dragon Rising, it was on an island. This is inland, right? This is like you're battling what, what region, you know, what, who, what's the conflict? So you're in Tajikistan, which is on the border with China. Okay. Um, the terrorists have basically gone into striking every modern civilization they get their hands on. Uh -huh. So they've actually been striking into China. Um, and the United States is invading at their own peril uh, right on the border. Okay, and you're the, the tip of that spear, basically? Yeah, so you're the, the tip of the American spear. And now it's time to take a nap in the road. <laughs> I'm going to wait for a convoy to come up because I and like so getting into vehicles. Yeah, that's cool. And this game has many vehicles, presumably. 
This game uh, does have vehicles. Um, largely, you're riding in the back of them as, uh -huh. a, as opposed to driving a tank, um, uh, at least for the uh, preview build that we've done here. Okay. Uh, I cool. actually I am obligated to mention that this is a preview build and preview build and not a final build of the game. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely an important point to make, folks, because that you know then you're saying like, well, I don't know, those grass textures were popping in or something like that, or you know the enemy AI. I will kill those grass textures as they. Pop oh in. no, they're fighting back with mud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cool. So that's that's a neat little town. I like that. I don't know how they got those cr containers up there, but they must have had some kind of crane, right? I'm assuming that they did everything by hand. They just uh, stacked people on each other's shoulders and <laughs> probably put those up there. Okay, so the vehicles have arrived now. It's my job to then run up and get into the vehicle with my Bravo, Bravo. team. And now this guy's punking you, right? Like, <laughs> uh -huh. You can't get... See ya! Nice. And this is back to the calisthenics. Indeed. This is why <laughs> it is important to stay in shape as a Marine. Well, very cool. I like those mountain ranges in the back. Uh, this, this, does this conclude the sort of little skirmish demo we got going on here? It does. You can uh, take a look at the nice mountain ranges oh, back here. Oh, scenic. Very cool, Aaron. Thank you for thank you for demoing for showing us this showing this off to us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so, Operation Flashpoint, Red River. When's it coming out? What platforms? Red River comes out for 360, PS3, and PC this spring. This spring. All right, we have that to look forward to. Very cool. And now we come to the part of the show where you totally get stuff for sending us words in an email. It's trivia. We're giving stuff away today. Lots of stuff as it happens. And Caro, uh, what is the first batch of stuff? Yeah, I don't know if, if this even qualifies as trivia because there's not really there's not really a question related to it. Okay. Here's the deal. We are giving away 1,000 Demonobats for the game Forsaken World. If any of you play Forsaken World and you want a Demonobat, uh, email us at on the spot at gamespot.com or let us know in the trivia module on the side of the page and we will hook you up. Uh, we have 1,000 of these, so the first 1,000 only to respond will get this uh, Demono bat. That's true. And yes. now our second batch is going to be what's inside the box. Uh, it's not a red snapper. It's This one is going to actually involve a question because, check it out, it's a pair of shoes. They, you know, are good for running like this. If you run like a bunny rabbit or something like that. I don't know. Uh, we're giving away these shoes. They're sort of Crisis 2 themed. Yes. You'll notice. They have the, the hexagonal the, swish the on the side. The kind of nano oh, yeah. suit thing going Shaban. on there. Here's the catch. Uh, they're size nine. nine so nine? Nine, 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 nine and a half? Crud, I don't remember. It's nine or nine and a half, folks. So if you wear that size shoe and you want this pair, this is the question you're going to have to answer. What is the name of the character who gives you the nano suit at the beginning of Crisis 2? Now, if you want to get these size 9, we've confirmed that. Uh, shoes, send us your answer. Again, on the spot at GameSpot.com or use the trivia, answer trivia button on the side of the page. Send it in and uh, you could win this pair of shoes. And uh, they're, they're kind of cool. Yeah. Lightweight, might make you fast, will not make you invisible or increase your armor rating. Just saying. And with that, folks, we are coming to the end of Today on the Spot as you know it. Our show concludes here, and then we're back on Thursday, live, same time, same internet station. Yes, and it's not only, you shouldn't only tune in because it's going to be live and because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Chris could make all kinds of errors, and it'll be fun to watch for that reason. Flawless. Uh, if, Flawless victory, <laughs> I guarantee you. But also because not we're going to have all kinds of really cool content, like a demo of one of the most highly anticipated games of the year, an exclusive demo. And not just because we made it up. Yes, a real... A for real exclusive, yes. and this game is definitely one that we've been watching here with much anticipation. We'll have that. We'll have demos for LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm told. Yes. yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, a whole bunch of other stuff for you folks. We really hope you join us on Thursday. And with that, we bid today on the spot adieu. And thank you for joining us. As always, I'm your host, Chris Waters. I'm Carolyn Pettit. And we're saying have a great week. See you folks on Thursday when we're going to be live. I, we, did we I think we did. Yeah, Remember that thing that we were talking about that the British dudes did? We're doing it now. There is but one. <clears throat> That is both perfect and forsaken. Meditate on that. It just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs>